But old earth here again. I had an artist friend of mine make this drawing. Why do you think I'm coughing in this picture? Of course, I don't really need to breathe, not like you people and animals do, and I don't actually cough either. Sometimes, though, I do wish that I could cough just to get rid of some of the air pollution that is collected in the skies. Air pollution is a very serious problem, and it's something that affects the whole planet. Fortunately, it's a problem that can be solved. However, it's not going to be solved unless people pitch in and do their part to keep the air clean. Even you can help. Air pollution can cause health problems for people. You have lungs inside your chest. This illustration shows you what lungs look like. Each time you inhale or breathe in, your lungs fill up with air like balloons. When you breathe out or ex exhale, the air leaves your lungs. If there is pollution in the air you breathe, then each time you inhale, that pollution enters your lungs. Over time, this can cause health problems. The more polluted the air, the more pollution you breathe in. And the fact is, dirty, polluted air is bad for people's lungs and can make them sick. Here's a picture of a big American city. Let's take a close look at it. If you look at the background where there are large buildings, you can see that the air looks kind of foggy and clouded. Look even closer, beyond the city, and you can see a thin brownish yellow strip of air just below the light blue sky. That's air pollution or smog, which floats over the top of the city. Air pollution creates global problems. That means that smog and other forms of air pollution can cause problems all over Earth, or as some people call me, the globe. In other words, the places that create a lot of air pollution, such as big cities with lots of cars and factories, are not the only places that are harmed or hurt by air pollution. Air pollution is carried by the wind to other places. As it floats up high in the atmosphere, higher than the highest airplanes, but it doesn't float off into space. Instead, it collects up in the sky. Luckily, there is a lot that you can do in your home, school, and town to help solve the problem of air pollution. And here comes another big R word, responsibility. That's right. If people want to make sure that the air is clean, then it's their responsibility to learn how they can help. One of the most amazing things about people is that you have figured out how to make and use electricity. You use it for so many things, including light bulbs, which you turn on and off with light switches. Televisions, refrigerators, air conditioners, computers, and so much more are also plugged into electrical outlets. You might have heard that too much television is bad for your brain, but I bet you didn't know that it's bad for the air too. Why? Because when you watch TV, you use electricity, and using electricity can add to air pollution, even though you can't see anything going into the air. What do you see in this picture? First of all, it's a really long train. What's the train carrying? It's carrying one of the most important natural resources in the world, coal. Coal is a type of rock that people dig up out of the earth. In some places, people burn coal to produce or make energy. Energy from burning coal can be used to make electricity. This is a picture of a coal-fired power plant. But coal-fired power plants can generate large amounts of air pollution. Do you see the electrical lines running out from this plant on the lower right corner of the picture? Every time someone turns on a light, a computer, or any other electrical appliance, there is a chance that the electricity is coming from a power plant like this one, and as a result, a little more pollution is added to the air. But when you turn off the lights, you do not add any pollution. It's a simple thing that everyone can do to help reduce air pollution. Do you know what this is? This is a tailpipe of a car. And it is another big cause of air pollution. Every time someone starts a car, that car lets air pollution out of the engine through the tailpipe. The pollution that comes out of the tailpipe is called exhaust. So what exactly is car exhaust and how does it pollute the air? What is this person doing? He's pumping gas into his car at a gas station. Gasoline is extremely useful. People use it in their cars, trucks, buses, boats, airplanes, and lawnmowers. Every day, people around the world use millions and millions of gallons of gasoline. A car's engine burns gasoline, which gives it power. When a driver steps on the gas, he or she presses down the gas pedal, which is on the floor of the car. That sends more gasoline to the car engine and makes the car go. But when gasoline burns like coal, it creates air pollution. With millions of cars driving around letting out exhaust, the pollution really starts to add up. The more cars and the bigger those cars are, the more air pollution they create. That's why it's always a good idea to walk, ride your bike, or take the bus when you can. All this helps reduce the amount of air pollution. Welcome back. Now, what was the main idea or main topic of this read aloud? Air pollution. What part of the body do you breathe with? 
your lungs. You breathe in air through your mouth, through your nose, you suck it in, goes down your throat, into your lungs, and that's where your body processes the oxygen. Now, imagine air pollution getting into your lungs. Why is that a bad thing? Air pollution is toxic. It can get into your lungs and make you sick. What do you call that waste that comes out of a car's tailpipe? Exhaust. And how is exhaust bad for Earth? It creates air pollution. Why is watching something like too much television actually bad for the environment? Well, you use electricity when you watch TV. Electricity is sent to your house by a factory. The factory probably does something like burn coal in order to make electricity. And well, burning coal, that goes right into the air and creates air pollution. Air pollution is a global problem, meaning it affects the entire globe. So wherever a city or a person is creating a lot of pollution, it's a problem for the entire world. Remember that air pollution doesn't just stay in place. It gets blown around in the atmosphere. So if I create a bunch of air pollution in my city, in my neighborhood, it doesn't just affect my neighborhood. It could float around in the air and affect things all around me, the entire state of Michigan. This word right here was in the read aloud. This word is harmed. Let me read the part where it was in the story. It says, the places that create a lot of air pollution, such as big cities with lots of cars and factories are not the only places that are harmed or hurt by air pollution. Harmed means hurt. You might get harmed if you fall down on the sidewalk. So I'm gonna read five things to you and I want you to think about if you are harmed or something is harmed or not harmed. Number one, someone safely crosses the road. They are not harmed. Two, someone gets sick from drinking polluted water. They are harmed. Three, two squirrels escape from a dog by climbing a tree. They are not harmed. Phew. Four, someone falls down on an icy sidewalk and gets hurt. Ouch, they are harmed. Number five, a factory dumps chemicals into a river where fish live. Those fish are harmed. I know all of this talk about how we can take care of Earth and how we are harming Earth can make you a little bit sad. I know it makes me kind of upset when I think about it, but I do what I can and I make the decisions and vote for the things that I think are best for taking care of Earth. Um, and if you talk about it with your families, I wonder if they have any ideas about what you can be doing at home or maybe ways you can start taking care of Earth a little bit more. I wonder what their ideas are. You should ask them. All right, boys and girls, thank you for listening and learning with me, and I will see you next time.